What do I cook when it's really hot out and I just can't be bothered to cook? Well, I make a very lazy version of dandan noodles where it minimizes the cooking but maximizes the flavor. Let me show you how to make it. To start things off, I'm going to prepare my toppings. Uh, keep in mind that all of these toppings are optional, so you can have any combination of them or you can have none of them. It's all up to you. Uh, the first thing I'm going to prepare are my cucumbers. I'm going to take my cucumber and slice it on a diagonal uh, into maybe 8th inch thick slices, um, as you can see here. And I'm going to go through that. And then once I have it all sliced up, I'm going to go ahead and slice it down into, uh, I guess, match thick sizes. So trying to make it as even as possible. The next topping I'm using is cabbage. What I like to do with the cabbage is thinly slice it uh, so that you know it's in almost like a shredded form. Um, what I do with the cabbage is later on when I mix in the noodles, uh, it's going to be thin enough so that it, the sauce for the noodles will dress the cabbage as well and soften it down a little bit. After I have my cucumber cabbage sliced up, I'm going to now slice up my uh, green onion and cilantro. For green onion, all I'm going to do is take it, just kind of the green parts, and slice it on a diagonal um, so I have nice small pieces of it. Not too thick, not too thin. And for my cilantro, I'm just going to bunch it up and uh, run my knife through it real quick. It doesn't have to be finely chopped or anything, just uh, you know, a rough chop is fine. Because uh, this is going to be a topping anyway, so it doesn't need to be like finely minced. What I like to do though with my green onion cilantro is put it in a bowl and mix it together so that when I go ahead and uh, sprinkle this on top of my noodles, there's going to be an even uh, distribution of the cilantro and the green onion. So once we have all the toppings prepared, we're going to get onto our sauce. Uh, for the sauce, I'm going purely off of taste, so it's kind of hard to give you measurements, but I'll try my best. Uh, the first thing I'm going to put in the bowl is uh, some garlic and some ginger. Uh, for ginger, I use one about this size, and I don't know, about an inch. And all I do is grate it into the bowl, uh, and that way it will kind of like mince up the ginger and kind of release the juices. Uh, same thing for the garlic. I'm using a medium sized clove, and I'm going to grate that in as well. Um, again, grating it will just help it kind of release the juices, um, that way I don't have to do any chopping. Also, the reason why I'm using a piece of garlic that's kind of small is because I'm going in raw, so I'm not cooking it down, so it's not the flavor's not going to mellow out. There's going to be kind of a pungency to it. So if you use a big piece, it's going to give you a big garlic bite. Okay, after both of those are grated in, I'm going to go ahead and add my peanut butter. I'm adding about a fourth cup of peanut butter. So the more you add, the creamier sauce is going to be. The less you add, the less creamy it's going to be. So a fourth cup tends to be where I go with it. The next ingredient I'm adding is soy sauce. I'm adding about two tablespoons and then I'll add more later to taste if I think it's not salty enough. Uh, this next ingredient is dark soy sauce. I'm only adding in a teaspoon and a half because it's not really adding any saltiness for me. It's really adding in color. It's going to give me the dark amber color to the sauce. So you really don't need all that much. Now next is the Chinese black vinegar. I'm not going to even try saying the name because I don't want to butcher the name. I'm going to add two tablespoons of the vinegar to the sauce. Um, with the Chinese black vinegar, it's different from your typical vinegars in that it's, it has a slight sweetness to it. It's not really that tangy or that sour and it doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't punch you in the throat as much as other vinegars. Um, so really try to use this if you can. If you can't use it, I say the next best will probably be some balsamic vinegar that you want to probably dilute down a little bit. For this last ingredient, I'm adding in mushroom powder. It's a secret ingredient of mine that I always add into all my dishes. It gives it, uh, anything you add it to, a nice umami savoriness. For this one, I'm only adding in a teaspoon because that's all I need. Because this uh, mushroom powder is a little bit salty. So now I'm going to add in my sugar. I'm only going to add in a teaspoon to balance out all the saltiness and the sourness from the vinegar. And that's it. I'm not trying to make the sauce sweet. I'm just trying to round out all the flavors in the sauce. But if you want to make your sauce sweeter, you can go ahead and add in more sugar. That's totally fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and stir everything together. 
uh, make sure everything is fully incorporated and everything is dissolved. Um, but as I'm mixing it, I notice that my sauce is a little thick, so I'm going to add some water. But before that, I'm going to go ahead and give this sauce a taste, an initial tasting, to see if the saltiness or the sweetness or the sourness is enough for me. Um, I thought this sauce needed a little bit more soy sauce, so I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit more soy sauce. Uh, let's say a teaspoon's worth. And then I stir that in, and then I'm going to take in some water and slowly add in the water and stir it in to the consistency I want. Uh, with this sauce, you kind of want it to be on the uh, liquidy side because once you throw in your noodles, it's going to absorb up all that sauce. So if it's thick, you're not going to be able to stir your um, noodles through. So once I added in my water, I, I gave it another taste and I thought that my sauce needed a little bit more saltiness. So I added a little bit more uh, soy sauce and a little bit more dark soy sauce. Again, dark soy sauce not for saltiness. I just thought it needed a little bit more of the color. But after that, uh, it was perfect for me. So I'm going to set that aside. For the noodles, I'm going to be using these uh, udon noodles that I got from the instant udon bowls. Uh, the Nongshim ones, you know, the one with the red lids. The one you can get from like Costco or your Asian grocery store. Um, you don't necessarily have to go out and get these ones specifically. You can get the ones that are just, um, you know, individually packed that they sell at the Asian grocery store. Um, but if you don't like udon noodles, you can use, you know, ramen noodles, you can use vermicelli noodles, really any noodles that you have on hand. But I do like the thicker, chewier noodles for this dish. So to cook these noodles, I'm going to get my uh, electric kettle on so that my water can start boiling. Um, if you don't have a kettle, just boil water however you usually boil water. So my water is done boiling now. I'm going to go ahead and throw my udon noodles into... Uh, kind of a medium sized bowl and I'm going to go ahead and dump my um, boiling water on top of that to make sure it's f the udon noodles are fully submerged and then we're going to set it aside for four minutes because that's what the package said to do um, but whatever noodles you're using cook it to those instructions so while my noodles are cooking I'm going to go ahead and cook some eggs up again this is also an optional topping you don't have to do it but I like to have a nice crispy uh, sunny side up egg on my noodles so to fry an egg I'm going to get a pan, heat it up on medium-high heat, and get that nice and hot. I'm going to go ahead and drizzle some oil in, and, and then when my oil is hot, I'm going to crack in an egg. Um, now the idea is that I want my pan to be kind of hot so that right when I get my egg in, it starts to sizzle up, and that's how I get the crispy edges on the outside. Um, as my eggs are cooking, I'd like to take some of the oil and baste it onto the egg to help the uh, cooking process, you know, to speed it up, make it faster. And then once my eggs are done, I'm going to go ahead and pull it off and just reserve it on a plate. And this time my eggs are done cooking and my noodles are done cooking. So all I have left to do is to assemble them. So let's do it. To assemble this dish, I'm going to start by pouring half the sauce into my bowl. Um, I know it looks like a lot of sauce, but the udon noodles will just soak it all up. I'll show you in a bit. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, my cabbage. Um, I like my cabbage to be the next layer because the cabbage will kind of soak up some of that sauce as well. And then I'm going to dump in my udon noodles. Um, put in as much as you want, but this is how much I'm going to put in. And then this is where, you know, you can put in other toppings as well. So I like to put in my cucumber on the side, uh, the cilantro and green onion mix on the side, and top it off with the fried egg. Last but not least, I'm going to add in some chili oil. Uh, mine is homemade, but it's okay if you use some store-bought one. Uh, I, I'm going to take some of that oil and drizzle all over the noodles and the dish itself, and then take some of the paste on the bottom, that chili flake mixture, and put it um, on the side with my the rest of the toppings. And then, all we have now is a taste test. First of all, egg yolk, runny egg yolk. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay. All right, let me stir this up. So, this is what I was talking about. See, after I stirred it in, there's barely, I don't know, you can see, there's barely any sauce left. That's because the udon noodles soaked it all up. So, let's give it a taste. Cheers. Oh, that's so good. That is so, so good. Alright, one more bite. One more bite. Oh, 
I'm so good. This dish is so good. You know, as you can see, there's very little cooking and it delivers so much flavor. You got, you know, the ginger and the garlic in there that delivers a punch with the salty savoriness and then, you know, the umami from that mushroom powder. It's so good. And that vinegar kind of just brightens up the whole dish when, with the cucumber and the veggies and the herbs. It just freshens everything up so well. So, give this recipe a try. And if you like what you're seeing, hit the like button below. Hit the subscribe button for more content like this. And hit this over here for my previous video and over here to subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.